All right, everybody, welcome in for our notes for today. This is 6.1, uh, Europe Explores the New World. This is the beginning of our unit uh, looking at exploration and imperialism. So we'll dive into our notes for today. Again, just to kind of set up the scene here, when we talk about this period in time, Europe during the 1450s, thereabout is relatively economically weak during this time. While you still have growth uh, during this time, we're seeing that still uh, from an economic standpoint, uh, Europe is pretty weak. They're cut off from a lot of world trade. You're talking about a lot of kind of these small kingdoms that are isolated from Asia and Africa. And again, the European diet, we're talking about things like porridges and cabbage, right, that are stewed things that aren't particularly um, tasty moving forward. And again, when we look at this just in terms of how people are depicted in different parts of the world in art, we see that, again, farming, that kind of feudal lifestyle is very common for people in Europe, whereas you have right, these pictures from uh, places like Asia where there's much more culture. The dress is finer. We see that they're uh, depicted in a more um, advanced or more civilized, if you will, uh, manner at this time. And again, this is essentially true. The rest of the world during this time would have been more stronger, more uh, advanced. They would have had more diverse economies than uh, certain places in Europe. And a lot of this has to do with the fact that there's lots of trade taking place in certain places within uh, basically the, you could call it the basin uh, of the Indian Ocean. Remember, we've got India here. We have China, which is a huge trading empire. And then you have all these empires between the Ottomans up here. You've got all these uh, Islamic caliphates and trading empires, the Persians, uh, as well as down here in East Africa, you have all these very wealthy uh, trading empires along the Swahili coast here in East Africa. So again, we're seeing all these different connecting points in terms of trade to these different locations throughout the uh, continents of Asia and Africa. This is also more or less around the same time that we see that Europeans uh, are not too welcoming of outsiders, particularly from different religious backgrounds. Europe was, again, mainly Christian at this time, uh, was very exclusionary uh, towards Jewish people, uh, that it was very commonplace for Jewish people living in Europe to be uh, excluded into uh, ghettos in certain cities, as well as the fact that uh, Muslims were expelled from places like Spain. This is going to be a big problem, especially for the Ottomans. Why? Well, it basically creates a blockade for European trade during this time, that the Ottomans don't want the Europeans due to their mistreatment um, of, of Muslims to trade through the different land trade routes to Asia. In terms of exploration, this is going to kind of be where we start to see this move forward. When we talk about the old world versus the new world, okay, again, if you are Joe Schmo living in Europe at this time, would you have known the entirety of the world? No, but this would have been more or less in the highlighted circle here, your world view that you would know okay, more or less Europe, Africa, Asia were the kind of continents and the world in which you lived in. The new world over here okay, in the Americas, North and South, would not have been something that would have been known at this point in time prior to exploring. And this is where we're going to start to see these changes. Why? Well, during the 1400s, we start to see that these monarchs of Europe, they are much more content with trying to explore 
okay, these different areas throughout Europe, okay. They're also trying to create lots of competition with each other, okay, and as this competition, they're going to explore and try to finance uh, journeys outside of Europe is what I meant to say earlier. And there's going to be three main motivators that we're going to talk about here. So not only are they getting more money, there's these different motivating factors for them to explore different parts of the world. And we also see that uh, there's a lot more uh, technology that's going to assist in spreading out this global connection and make this globe and all these kind of tan parts uh, actually discovered or mapped by Europeans. The first of these three G's is gold. Okay? Again, the main reason that people are exploring uh, from Europe at this time is to make money. Okay? It's an economic reason. Okay? New trade routes, okay? finding new ways to trade resources to make money, okay? to find new goods, okay? like spices, like silks, okay? These are big, big deals, okay? And they want to be able to get them from Asia, all right? These things make money for people. Uh, they're seen as ways of showing wealth as well. And, and they're also just relatively important to everyday life. Uh, one of the big things is that spice, okay? If you've ever had a piece of unseasoned chicken, you know, it doesn't taste like much. In the 14, 1500s, having fresh meat was not always uh, commonplace, okay? You buy chicken, it gets slaughtered at market, you might be eating that chicken for a couple of days. Uh, in order to kind of stretch the quality of the meat, uh, having lots of spices and seasonings to kind of mask what might be kind of the unsavory flavors of the chicken going bad or any other type of meat going bad as incredibly important and incredibly valuable. So again, we're trying to find ways to get these things because we want to be able to get them into European markets because again, that makes us money. It makes us gold. And the way that this is really going to start to uh, show is that we're going to find sea trade routes that are much faster than the land ones and they're much more easily accessible because they're not blocked by the Ottomans. The next big thing was God. So not only do we have people that are exploring because they're looking to make money, uh, you have people that are looking to make a religious impact, okay? So kind of a social aspect of exploration. With this, again, Europeans, there's people that believed that the Christian kingdoms of Europe, France, England, Spain, Portugal, that they had a duty to convert non-Christian populations on other continents. So at first, this is really going to take place um, especially with Asia and Africa, as these trading posts are set up, that we see this across the board. Uh, in Africa, uh, these are set up with uh, missionaries. We even see it in places as far as Japan, where you have um, the Dutch traveling over there and trying to spread Christianity uh, to the Japanese. So again, when we're talking about this, not only do we have traders, that are looking to explore. We also have missionaries that are joining these exploration journeys with the purpose of spreading religion. And then the last one is glory. This is this idea of just general competition, okay? That European countries want to prove that they are the best. So again, this competition aspect, you want to be the first and the fastest to different places. And Portugal is going to kind of be the, the winner in terms of leading the way here, mainly because uh, they're the first to kind of set up uh, some of these trading posts and do some of these large-scale explorations around Africa. Again, we're going to see this competition continue on, right? Spain uh, is going to jump into the game, as well as France, Great Britain, and the Netherlands are going to be kind of the other big four players here moving forward. Again, so glory is the idea that, again, we want to kind of win this uh, from a competitive aspect. Just like I mentioned, Portugal leads the way. And this really starts because of one person named Prince Henry. Uh, Prince Henry later becomes nicknamed Prince Henry the Navigator because he spends a lot of effort and cash 
uh, to try to explore eastward. Portugal was naturally a seafaring people. Why? They're right on the coast of the Atlantic Ocean. Uh, but they built this navigation school with the idea of, again, training sailors, but also trying to um, increase scientific uh, discovery around things like navigating using astronomy and cartography, uh, as well as looking at new building techniques to make faster ships during this time. And this leads to all of the uh, benefits that come from the Portuguese uh, being able to explore further going uh, south around Africa. Bartolome Diaz in 1488, he's the first to reach the Cape of Good Hope in southern Africa. And then you have Vasco da Gama by 1497, who makes his way all the way around Africa uh, and is able to uh, land in what would be uh, India, uh, making that trade route connection between Portugal in Europe and India uh, in Asia. Now, Christopher Columbus has different ideas here. Christopher Columbus, an Italian explorer from the city of Genoa, he ends up um, basically going to the Spanish crown, the monarchs of Spain, and asks Queen Isabella to basically uh, finance a trip, not to go east like the Portuguese did, but to go west. Again, with his idea being, okay, if I sail far enough west, uh, I'll go around the other side of the globe and I should be able to get to East Asia, that he imagines that he's going to land in the Indies, okay, which would be like present day Indonesia, near um, kind of in between India and China, okay. So he sails and he sails and he sails. And then one day uh, in October of 1492, he lands in what he proclaims as the Indies. Now, again, Columbus proclaims this, okay? But, right, the dummies in the Caribbean, okay? And Columbus ends up kind of stumbling upon this new land. He does not find a trade route to Asia. He finds two massive continents, uh, and those do have the three Gs, right? They provide Spain, and then later on other European countries, with the ability for the three G's, that they're able to spread uh, God. They get the glory of setting up these new uh, colonies as well as the gold from the resources and the physical gold that comes from it. This land from this point forward is going to be known as the New World, okay, which we now call the Americas. And Columbus returns to Spain. He comes back and presents a journal that he kept during his journey to the queen and basically tells her about the land and the people he discovered. Now, obviously, people had been living there for thousands of years, but again, this is the first kind of knowledge uh, when it comes to Spain uh, and these kind of European kingdoms that they had known about this. So the Spanish monarchs find, uh, find money for three more voyages. And on these voyages, this is where we're going to start to set up uh, Spanish colonies, right? And this is the land that's controlled by another nation. So while people lived okay, in these Caribbean islands, in present-day Mexico, South America, even North America, uh, these colonies are going to be set up and they're going to be controlled by Spain, even though the majority of the people living there okay, are not of Spanish descent at this point in time. And again, these colonies okay, are going to be geared at bringing Spain both the riches of uh, growing uh, these different resources, uh, producing goods, as well as just the general labor that would come from the native populations of the New World. And Columbus really didn't mince words with uh his rationale for this moving forward. He describes his first voyage saying, wherever I've gone, I have had conversation with them. I have given them some various things I had, a cloth and other articles, and received nothing in exchange. 
They are immediately content with any small thing, valuable and invaluable. I will bring to Spain's highness many slaves. So again, you can see with this letter from Columbus that the goals were pretty well stated that there was a plan moving forward to take over uh, and to enslave people within the Americas. Again, this goes back to this concept of uh, the fact that the whole or the main thrust of exploration was to make money and to bring wealth and riches to uh, these European monarchs. So again, as we go forward, we're going to talk a little bit more about exploration uh, and we'll work through this and how this looks in the New World and the colonies during like the 16, 15, 16, and 1700s over the next couple of classes here as we move forward. So again, I thank you for watching. Hope that you uh, learned a little bit more about uh, the age of exploration. Have a good one.